بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم بعد أن أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الذين يذكرون الله قياما وقعودا وعلى جنوبهم صدق الله العظيم وجاء في رواية الذي يذكر ربه والذي لا يذكر ربه كمثل الحي والميت أو كما قال أما بعد الحمد لله الله سبحانه وتعالى has allowed us to come here for this Jum'a in the above verses which I have recited Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talked about a very important thing and that idea is the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings descriptions of the creation which he has created in the world of the various things ranging from the heavens to the earth to even our own selves and the, the, the amazing nature of these creations and all these whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings these different descriptions Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always right after bringing these descriptions he draws the attention of mankind to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says أَفَلَا يَنظُرُونَ إِلَى الْإِبِرِ كَيْفَ خُلِقَتْ وَإِلَى السَّمَاءِ كَيْفَ رُفِعَتْ وَإِلَى الْجِبَارِ كَيْفَ نُصِبَتْ وَإِلَى الْأَرْضِ كَيْفَ سُطِحَتْ فَذَكِّرْ إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُذَكِّرْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the camel in its amazing nature of how it has been created. It is able to sustain itself for multiple days without water in the scorching heat of the desert. وَإِلَى السَّمَاءِ كَيْفَ رُفِعَتْ How the heavens have been raised without any pillars. And it's just in the sky. وَإِلَى الْأَرْضِ كَيْفَ سُطِحَتْ How the ground has been laid out flat so that we can walk on this ground. <coughs> فَذَكِّرْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then after after mentioning this qudra of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says remind O Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam remind the people for indeed you have been sent as a reminder so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala repeatedly draws our attention to his greatness in the Quran and continuously reminds us that we have to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is natural that a person forgets that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the remind for indeed, reminder is beneficial for the believers. وَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ ذِكْرَ تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the purpose of the creation of mankind in the Qur'an as well. He says, فَحَسِبْتُمْ أَنَّمَا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ عَبَثًا وَأَنَّكُمْ إِلَيْنَا لَا تُرْجَعُونَ Do you think that you have been created in vain? That there is simply no purpose, no major purpose to your creation? That you've been created to just enjoy yourselves and then die and then that's it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked us this question in the Qur'an to make us think that we have been created for a purpose. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created mankind and jinnkind except so that they can recognize me and they can worship me. Hence our entire life is an ibadah. Our entire life is a worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this ibadah, it is not limited to the few uh, times we may pick up a tasbih, the few times which may come, we may come to the masjid to perform salah, the time when we go to hajj, our ibadah is not limited to this. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that our creation has been made for ibadah, and if ibadah is only for a few minutes, what is the purpose of the rest of the, the time that we have in this world? Hence, every single portion of our life is made for the dhikr and ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, فَإِذَا قَضَيْتُمُ الصَّلَاةَ فَاذْكُرُ اللَّهَ قِيَامًا وَقَعُودًا وَعَلَى جُنُوبِهِمْ When you have completed your salah, which is a dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The salah is a dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still says that when you finish your salah, when you have completed it, فَاذْكُرُ اللَّهَ Then remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In what state? In a state that you are standing, qiyam, وَقُعُودًا In a state that you are sitting, in a state that you are lying down. At every single moment of your life, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Since that is the purpose of your creation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about uh, the rituals of hajj. And he says, فَإِذَا قَضَيْتُمْ مَنَاسِكَكُمْ فَاذْكُرُ اللَّهَ كَذِكْرِكُمْ آبَاءَكُمْ When you have completed the rituals of hajj, then again, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So after you have completed all these mandatory rituals, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed among, uh, over this human being, 
Then you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala too. Your ibadah is not limited to the masjid. Your ibadah is not limited to salah. Your ibadah is not limited to the hajj. And that is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَذْكُرْ رَبَّكَ فِي نَفْسِكَ تَضَرُّ وَخِيفَةً Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your own self. Always think of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in whatever moment you are in, whatever situation you are in. Ask yourself, what would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala want from me in this situation? That is the purpose of our dhikr, so that we may completely and fully have our lives in accordance to the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to live our lives. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after, you know, He repeatedly mentions this in the Qur'an of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, being dhakir, being one who constantly remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us of people who are not dhakir, who do not remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these people, the example that is given for them is the example of a dead person. مَثَلُ الَّذِي يَذْكُرْ رَبَّهُ وَالَّذِي لَا يَذْكُرْ رَبَّهُ كَمَثَلِ الْحَيِّ وَالْمَيِّدِ it comes in a narration that the person, the example of a person who remembers his Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and a person who does not remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the parable drawn between these two people is like a person who is living and a person who is dead. And that is, this death is not one that is physical. This death is a spiritual death. And it is repeatedly emphasized in the Qur'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about martyrs in the Qur'an. لا تقولوا لمن يقتل في سبيل الله أموات. Allah subhanahu wa taala tells and commands the believers that do not say to those who have passed away fighting in the path of Allah subhanahu wa taala, those who have sacrificed their lives for Allah subhanahu wa taala, do not call them dead. Do not say that they are dead. Yet they are physically dead in front of us. They have no breath. Yet they are living a spiritual life. You cannot say that they are dead like other people who are dead. Why? Because these people, they sacrifice their lives for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hence, there is a di- distinct, there is a, uh, a difference between a physical death and there is a difference between a spiritual death. That is why there are people who are dead, yet they are physically living. And there are people who are alive, yet they are physically dead. The poet says, <coughs> قَدْ مَا تَقَوْمٌ قَدْ مَا تَقَوْمٌ وَمَا مَاتَتْ فَضَائِلُهُمْ وَمَا تَقَوْمٌ وَهُمْ فِي النَّاسِ أَحْيَاءُ there are people who have passed on, passed on from this life, from the zahiri life. Yet their fadail and their virtues still live on till today. And there are people who have died, yet they are still breathing today. So there are people who are alive, physically in front of us, yet their hearts have died. And the, re- the reason their hearts have died is that they do not remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hence, a cure to a dead heart is the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It comes in a narration that the heart, it wears out, it becomes rusted. Just like metal rusts. And then the, the, the Sahaba radiallahu anhum ajma'in, they asked the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, وَمَا جَلَاؤُهَا How can we cure this rust? How can we remove this rust from the heart? And the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, تِلَاوَةُ Quran, Recite the Qur'an excessively. And in another narration, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam added to that, وَذِكْرُ الْمَوْتِ Remember death excessively as well. So these two things, which in essence is the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that which will cure a dead heart. <coughs> and that is where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala draws various examples in the Qur'an of the heart. وَإِنَّ مِنَ الْحِجَارَةِ لَمَا يَتَفَجَّرُ مِنْهُ الْأَنْهَارِ وَإِنَّ مِنْهَا لَمَا يَشَّقَّقُ فَيَخْرُجُ مِنْهُ الْمَاءِ وَإِنَّ مِنْهَا لَمَا يَهْبِطُ مِنْ خَشْيَةِ اللَّهِ وَمَا اللَّهُ بِغَافِلٍ عَمَّا تَعْمَلُون Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala compares the hearts of people with rocks as well. But there, there is always a moment in life where a person can turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can make that heart soft again. It is the ikhlas of a person which can do that. A person should wholeheartedly turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be ready to make a change in his life. And that is through the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is a fikr and it is a, a, a worry that every person should have. How can I make, if my heart has died, how can I revive my heart? And if alhamdulillah my heart is alive, I do remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how can I die on this day as well? The salaf of the past, they had a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Last week we had the winter conference regarding the mujaddideen, the few scholars who were selected, uh, to be spoken about and we bless our gathering by their mentioning and how they revived the deen in their centuries 
And we see in every single person, whether, it's, whether it was Imam Ahmad, whether it was Umar bin Abdul Aziz, whether it was Shah Waliullah radiallahu anhum wa rahimahumullahu ta'ala, every single person had a connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every single Sahabi had a connection to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every single individual of the past who was close to Allah, he had a close connection to Allah. And that is how and why he was able to affect the hearts of those around him. When he had a connection with Allah, he was able to, to pass on that connection and he was able to allow others to connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through him. However, every single individual, they had this fear of how they would die. Would they die on the kalima of La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? They had this fear in their heart, constant fear, constant worry. That yes, today I am interacting with the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. However, well, if my death comes tomorrow, will I be able to die on this kalima? Because tomorrow is an uncertainty. And in al amal bil khawatim, indeed actions will be judged on the basis and the way in which they were ended. Hence our life in its entirety is one action. And our life will be judged based on how we ended it. And if we ended it in a positive manner, if we ended it with the kalima on our tongues, even if a person may have spent his entire life sinning, if he asks tawbah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he ended his life positively, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can forgive him. And if a person, he ended up leaving the deen at the last moments, well, he left the deen. That's the end moment is what counts. And that is why there are stories like that of Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal rahimahullah ta'ala, which are mentioned in the books of uh, the stories of the Salaf. That, for example, once uh, when Imam Ahmed rahimahullah was passing away, uh, his, he asked his son to bring him water. And his son, he brought him water. And when he came back with the water, he heard Imam Ahmed rahimahullah ta'ala saying, that, لا بعد ولا بعد. Not yet, not yet. And the son was confused. He kept saying this, لا بعد لا بعد. And the son was like, you told me to bring water, I brought the water, why are you saying this? And then he, Imam Ahmad kept going, from, kept going from consciousness to unconsciousness, and he kept regaining consciousness. And eventually his son had the courage and he asked him, Oh father, why are you saying this? لا بعد لا بعد. And he explained that shaitan came to me and he said, فتني فتني. That oh Imam Ahmad, you have left my grasp. You're saved now. And Imam Ahmad rahimahullah ta'ala kept responding, La ba'du, la ba'du. As of yet, I have not saved. Why? Because I still have life within me. These were people even at the end of their time. Imam Ahmad rahimahullah, who is he? He is one of the founders and one of the, the pegs of Islam. One of the original scholars who laid down the foundations of various, various fields which, and subjects which are studied today. He was one of the greatest scholars of the past. Yet he had this fear still within him. The how will I die? Even in his final moments. <clears throat> and that is how we see in the Quran as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned stories in the Quran for us to take reminder. Indeed in the stories of those who have been mentioned in the Quran are lessons for people who have an intellect to take these lessons and to learn from them. And that is why we see in the story of Yaqub alayhi salam as he was passing away, what did he ask his children? Today when people are passing away, people are worried about the masail of inheritance. Well, you know, I have this, this, this much wealth. And of course that is important for a person to distribute his wealth in accordance to the sharia. But Yaqub alayhi salam was, was more worried about something else. Yaqub alayhi salam was a Nabi. His father was a Nabi and his grandfather was a Nabi too. They were all prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet when he was passing away, he told his children, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this in the Quran, أَمْ كُنْتُمْ شُهَدَاءَ إِذْ حَضَرْ يَعْقُوبَ الْمَوْتِ إِذْ قَالَ لِبَنِيهِ مَا تَعْبُدُونَ مِنْ بَعْدِي Were you present when Yaqub alayhi salam was presented by death? Death came to Yaqub alayhi salam and Yaqub alayhi salam was asking his children, was asking his children مَا تَعْبُدُونَ مِنْ بَعْدِي What will you all worship after me? These are children who grew up in the house of a Nabi. Any Nabi who grew up in the house of a Nabi. Who grew up in the house of a Nabi? This is a progeny of Anbiya. Yet he is asking his, his children, he has the fikr for his children, what will you worship after me? So this fikr was found within everyone. And it is, a, it is a, something that we must plant within ourselves as well. We must grow that and cultivate that within our, in our hearts. The khawf of what will happen, how will we pass away. 
And for that, we must learn to live a positive life. For the way a person lives as the way is, is the way that he will die, and the way a person dies is the way he, he will be resurrected. <coughs> and it is for the fact that people leave the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes this iman from this heart at times. فَلَمَّا زَاغُوا أَزَاغَ اللَّهُ قُلُوبَهُمْ When they left this, the path of the deen, they left the straight path, and they gave it up by themselves, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala left them in their misguidance. So it is an active effort from ourselves. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, يَأْتِي عَلَى النَّاسِ الزَّمَانٌ الْقَابِضُ عَلَى دِينِهِ كَالْقَابِضُ عَلَى الْجَمَرَةِ A person who, they, they, a time will come upon this ummah, that a person who is holding on to his deen, it is as if he will be holding on to, to a burning charcoal. So of course, it is very hard. And it will, time, as time passes on, it will probably get harder. But it is up to us to make a, a niyyah that we will try as hard as we can to hold on to the deen. And that is in wherein the reward lies. Al-ajru ala qadr al A person will be rewarded based on the, 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 more, the more hardships a person endures. And the more effort he puts in, that is uh, the more reward he will get in the akhirah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also, also mentions in the Quran that if we sacrifice the whatever time we have for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in return, what has Allah promised us? We hear this, we have to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have been created for His worship, but what will we get in the end? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ اشْتَرَى مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَنفُسَهُمْ وَأَمْوَالَهُمْ بِأَنَّ لَهُمُ الْجَنَّةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has purchased the souls and the lives of the believers in lieu for Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us. He did not need to give us something in return of our ibadah. Yet, out of his fadl and his karam, he has told us that if we worship him, how he ought to be worshipped to the best of our ability, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give, will give us Jannah. So it is a constant effort that we have to have. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُضِيعُ أَجْرَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not let the efforts of those who do good go to waste. Hence, if we do good in this life, if we live our life in accordance to the manner and the way which was shown, shown to us by the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in a manner which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not allow the effort to go into vain. And inshaAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will allow us to die with iman. So before we end, what are some take-home points that we can have? We, 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 we have learned that it is important for us to be in a constant state of dhikr. For us to always remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the purpose of our life. And we have to be ready for our death so that we, when we are always doing dhikr, inshallah when we pass away, we will be in a state of dhakirin. Allah kathirin wa dhakirat. Those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala excessively. And the way we do this is number one, we, we try whenever we... we are in a state of ghafla, we try to bring ourselves back into the state of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We all follow, it's, it's inevitable that a person will forget Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the day. But it is our job that whenever we remember, you know, we're like, oh, I'm, I'm forgetting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we automatically bring our minds back to the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And something which we can do on a more consistent basis is that have ta'aleem in the house of anything, whether it be maybe the seerah, of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, different ahadith books. But have some form of, some form of ta'aleem and education uh, going on in the house regarding the deen. Whether it be for five minutes, ten minutes, with the entire family. And have some time where we dedicate some time throughout the day, meaning every day before I go to work or when I come home from work, we, are, we have dedicated this time to recite Qur'an. Take out some time to recite Qur'an. And when there are programs going on uh, which allow us to learn the deen, which allow us to revive our hearts, let us take part in those programs as well, inshallah. And on that note, we have the program going on this weekend of uh, the, the four-day conference going on, uh, talking about different aspects of modern day life. How can we safeguard our iman? And it is something that is very important. And we have to take that initiative. We have to show Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Though Allah, I am making an effort. From my end, I am making an effort. Oh Allah, you allow me to say on this deen and die on this deen. So inshallah, this, this program will be taking place. And we have people from all over the country. People who have come from Texas, New York, dozens of people. 
Yet if we say a saying in Lombard around the Masjid Darus Salaam, if we do not benefit, that's, that's just very sad. That people from outside of Chicago, outside from other states are benefiting, yet in our own backyard we ourselves are not benefiting. So let us try to take part in this effort. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He revives our hearts and He allows us to die on this kalimah, La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.